Hi there, hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Well, the power of music is really something none of us can really deny. You know, music has that ability to shift our emotions almost instantly and can imprint memories on our co conscious and subconscious minds. You know, um, each of us have lived that moment when we only have to just hear a song to instantly be taken back and relive a special moment in our lives. You know, really, Music has such power, and I guess the reason why is, is because it connects us to our emotions. Not only this, but it has the incredible ability to teach our children so much. I've got a question for you. Did you actually know that 95% of a child's brain develops by the age of five years? We're incredible. Well, this proves that we really need greater emphasis um, on their um, early years of development. And lucky for us today, we're joined by our very special guest, Dr. Vicky Abad. Now, Dr. Vicky Abad is the founder and managing director of Music Beat Australia and a researcher at the Univ University of Queensland. We're really grateful for your time today. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Now, um, we're really fortunate to work with you guys quite a bit. and We've published an article um, uh, with, which interviews you also, um, and that sort of highlights the benefits of music um, in childhood development. And we're going to include a link um, in the introduction paragraph to that article, but there's so much to speak about on this, this subject, subject and to learn from, from your, um, your knowledge. Um, now, not forgetting that it's a really difficult time around the globe at the moment. Um, we've got a series of questions we'd love to be able to ask you. And the first one really being, you know, from your perspective, um, how can you see that creating music helps children in their development? Well, in terms of general development, uh, music's a wonderful tool for children, but there is so much great research out there now on how music supports children. I love the fact that music supports children um, in their development because it is something that is a whole brain activity, if that is probably the best way to put it. When you make music, your whole brain's involved. So children learn through a number of different ways um, and one of the ways we want them to learn is through the doing of, of things. So when you do, when you make music, your whole brain's involved. You're seeing, hearing, feeling, doing, responding. And it does it in ways that our brain loves. So our brains are wired to respond to repetition and to rhythm and structure. And music's a very repetitious process. It's built on rhythm. You know, music is built in structures. And for example, you, most melodies will be four bars long and there'll be four of those. So it, it's very helpful for our brains. Once little people are exposed to music and get the hang of music, music can reinforce things that they're learning. So learning songs helps children with their numeracy and literacy skills, for example. Uh, learning things to music is easier to memorise and recall. So we can use music as a mnemonic as another example. Um, our brain is primed to move when it hears music, that we hear it via our auditory system, but it goes straight into a um, part of the brain where we, our, our brain literally primes and gets ready to move. So we can help children learn about proprioception and motor planning and things like that by moving their bodies to music. When they play instruments, they use both of their hands, this action that we would call bilateral, and they cross over the middle of their bodies, their midlines. So there's so many different ways that music supports development. But generally speaking, we as um, researchers, music therapists, music teachers as well, and educators, we love the fact that music supports the development of musicality, but also the development of so many extra musical things, such as the child's ability to read, recognise sounds, um, learn their language skills, their number skills, regulate emotions. That's a whole other um, area we could get into because if you can't regulate your emotions it's very difficult to then be able to sit and attend and learn in a um, more formal setting and music's a lovely tool for helping children to learn how to regulate as well so there's lots of there's lots I could say actually but that's I hope in a nutshell why it's really incredible to think and I know there's a lot of research that shows that music in participation at home improves numeracy social skills, attention to detail, um, and, you know, this is above lots of other educational things, which I'm really fascinated with, and you just um, shared light to, um, but, um, you know, that aside, I mean, there, as you said, there's so many educational benefits to music, and 
in the home. But um, in your opinion, you know, why do you think people actually turn to music at times like this? And what is it about music that appeals uh, to us and actually brings us comfort? Yeah, it's a really good question. There's a lot going on at the moment, as you say. Um, I think people turn to music in times like this because where it, it, music brings us together. You said that earlier. It brings people together. It, it helps us feel a part of a community or a part of a, a shared um, sense of being. And the thing that I love about music is that the fact that we're human means that we're musical. I, I love this saying that I read once that to be human is to be musical. And it is so true because we're predisposed as human beings to relate musically with each other. This is one of the powers, and I often refer to it as a superpower, that parents have this superpower that they're musical and that they can use music to help their children to learn about themselves, their environment, their family, their culture, as well as their educational outputs, simply by sharing and being musical with their children. Yep. Um, and I think at times like this, when we bunker down, like we, we, there's a, something that's threatening or people are feeling threatened, so they have heightened levels of stress or the stress hormones such as cortisol, then they'll look for things that make them feel secure and feel connected. And for us, that's music as a, as a, as a, a being, human being. So you'll see at the moment, people are singing off their balconies and um, yeah. you know, sharing music and doing all these lovely things. And I think that it really taps into that sense of who we are as people. So for us at the moment, we can really use that music to help our children feel more comforted and secure. Um, whether they're consciously aware of what's happening or subconsciously because they're picking up on the stress and anxiety of the grown-ups in their homes, um, music is a lovely way for us to restore to the children some sense of normalcy. Uh, for example, their routines and rituals have all changed because kids aren't going to school and they're not going, maybe not going to childcare at the moment. Parents are home for different hours. Things, children respond to repetition. They love having their routines. And music can provide a parent a really simple way of bringing back some of those routines that have gone out the window just at the minute as we're all isolating and changing our you know, normal routines, yeah. so to speak. So I think that people tap into music at a very subconscious level because as humans, we can relate to music. We're also drawn to that sense of community um, that music provides. And as I said before about the way our brains just love re repetition and rhythm, I think sometimes when you're feeling a little bit threatened, the music can provide that too, that safety. So you either tap into music that's powerful to you, something that you like yourself, or it might be um, that sense of sharing. So for example, when people sing together, um, it releases oxytocin and helps you basically happy hormones, makes you feel good. That happens too when you listen and share music. Um, often it's a more of dopamine response, but there's different chemicals that we just refer to often as happy hormones that music brings. So when you're feeling really stressed and at the moment people are experiencing high levels of stress and anxiety, we can sort of override some of that by sharing more music, listening, dancing to music, because that also then means we're moving our bodies, which is another um, way we know increases happy hormones is to exercise. Um, and for little people, it's that connection. It's mum and dad are busy. Um, from my, in my house, for example, um, we were, we're self-employed. And as you said, I work as a researcher, I run this business, we've had to change the way we run our business in a very short period of time. It's been quite stressful. So it's nice to have a space where I can um, refocus to my daughter and, and share with her a meaningful uh, moment in music rather than being um, you know, distracted by what's going on and really stressed. I can break that up because I can say, hey, let's grab the ukuleles, let's play together, let's make some songs. And she and I can have a meaningful moment and something that I hope then helps um, balance for her. She's a bit older, mind you. She's 14 this year, so she's not a little bubby anymore. But she can look back and remember we had this time when we were home together and uh, we played the ukuleles together and, you know, learned a whole bunch of new songs together. Not just, oh, that's that time when mum was really stressed. I'd love to be able to ask this question, um, and I'm sure there's going to be lots of parents um, that are eager to know, what are some fun activities parents can do um, at home in isolation at the moment to help give their child a head start? 
um, even if they don't have any music background? What can they be doing? Well, this is, this is like I said before, you parents, you have a superpower now. It's called music. <laughs> and you are musical. I get told all the time by parents, oh, I can't sing, I'm not musical. And I disagree with you very respectfully, but I do because you have a voice unless there is a physical uh, reason for not being able to sing. So you don't have to be an opera trained singer. You might've seen a beautiful video of the opera singer singing, I still call Australia home. But your child thinks you're a rock star because you're, they've known your voice since before they were born. When they were born, they connected with, your, with their auditory sense, which is a, um, the sense that's most developed at birth, to connect with their parent and usually the mother, the one who's going to feed and do the real physical care in those early days. So they think you're a rock star. Maybe when they're a bit older, they don't, but certainly the little tiny ones do. They don't mind if your singing isn't perfect. So you can most certainly do a bunch of things right now with kids to provide routine and structure and fun, distraction from boredom at the moment as well. Um, and for little guys, if you don't want them getting too involved in tech, then make music live. So what do you do? You sing songs. Now you might, not know or remember all of them. So you might need to do a bit of a Google search and get a few songs under your belt. Um, but singing nursery songs, um, action songs, anything that involves moving your body. So songs where you're doing twinkly stars and incy wincy spiders, where you can provide some sensory feedback to little bodies too, tickles. Go out into the yard and actually find some spiders and then sing about them. Find instruments in the yard. Go on a treasure hunt. Instead of thinking about buying the instruments, maybe look in the yard and see if there are some sticks you can clap together like a clave or I love the poinciana seeds because they shake, they make a great sound. Um, there's a heap of different things and then go into the kitchen and grab out the ice cream containers and the pots and the pans and the wooden spoons. There's your drum kit and then you've got rice in a bottle as your shakers. So then you can make music. When you make music and you move your body and you and this child engage in a meaningful activity, that's when their little brains just light up, neurotransmitters start flying. So you talked earlier of the developmental benefits. You're getting all of that at the same time. You're providing this opportunity to feel secure and safe because you're with your grown up and they're sharing music with you um, and you're having this lovely experience together. So you can sing songs, you can dance, you can play instruments. And of course, there is loads of technology available to support you. I get asked by parents, should I let my child watch this music on the iPad and technology? And that's really very personal up to each parent, how much tech they want their children to have exposure to. But there are some really great music um, bands and apps out there that you can use to help you structure music if you don't feel 100% confident just to, you know, break into song and lead the music. Uh, La La is a great band. They, um, they have fantastic music. They're fantastic musicians. It's very interactive. That's just one example that I can give you. Um, there's Play School, of course. I love Play School. Fantastic pro um, program for little people. They've even done a show recently on COVID-19 and how, how it, like what it means and how to explain it with children. So you can use the technology to support you. What I say to parents who aren't 100% sure about Technology is you use it to your advantage rather than feeling like it's ruling you and your child. Yeah. Um, and the other thing at the moment while we're all in isolation is a lot of people are taking their programs online. So you can get the best out of technology. You can zoom in much like we are now, but have a live and interactive process. Um, so you, your child is responding to a real person who's singing and making music. Um, and that person's able to feed back because they can see the children and what's going on. So I'm seeing that in drama classes and, um, as well as dancing classes, we're doing it, other, other businesses are doing it. So there's quite a lot parents can tap into to help them make music in the home that at this moment in time will help keep those feelings of um, stress or fear. It, as I said earlier, they may be subconscious, Children might not be 100% aware of what's happening, but they're certainly aware things aren't necessarily the same. No. That parents, you know, the routines are changing. So you can use your music to bring back some routines, to structure the days, to have fun. And when you're having fun, you're increasing those happy hormones we talked about. 
um, you're laying down great foundations for emotional attachment and you're making memories. Yeah. And um, how have you personally used your um, extensive clinical um, experience in paediatric and early intervention music therapy um, and music learning um, to help um, sort of create the Music Beat program um, overall? Well, it's a good question. Um, a lot. I've used it a lot. What I've done over the years is we, we constantly hone the program because now I work in uh, research. When I started the business, I had been working for a, a lot, gee, at least 10, 15 years as a music therapist, um, a lot with families. And when I had my own daughter, I wanted to take her to a music program and I didn't find any that were interactive. I found, now this is, the landscape's changed a lot in 14 years, um, but when I took her, most of the available products were very educationally driven. So they were outcome focused or out, focused on outputs. And what I wanted was a program that would just celebrate the meaningful moments that she and I could share as a mum and a bub. And I know music does that. I mean, if you think about the way we talk to children, it's very musical. You know, we lean in and we exaggerate our sounds and we lift up our voice. We're such musical beings. I wanted something that would create this space where I didn't have to think about other things and the washing and the bills, but just be with my little baby. So I started my own group. I took it to my mother's group and, and played my guitar and the mums were like, wow, this is great. We should do this more often. So the business started from a, a very much a needs for what I wanted for my own child. And then as we've developed and we've evolved and expanded, we keep coming back to, well, what's the research showing what's best for children? So we know that what's best for children is to make music live. Um, and we know that it's to do it with someone they love, uh, someone who's going to be with them more than me on their one hour a week. So we have parents in the programs and we run a program that's really heavily focused on empowering the parent to take music home as much as it's focused on supporting the child's development. Because if the parent feels confident to sing and cut really capable of making music at home, then it becomes a part of every day. It just becomes incidental. And that's what we know from the research you referred to earlier, has the long-term benefits for children's um, cognitive and social or pro-social skills. Because the more they share in the home, the better their longer-term outcomes. So that's, that's the ways that my experiences have really impacted on the program to look at what's, what's the research saying is best for baby and best for preschooler and toddler now. And that research does change it. So we, we're always, you know, tweaking, updating our program. And um, yeah, but mostly I think that experience of the being a music therapist, having worked with a large um, population of people and parents from all walks of life and then becoming a parent um, very much impacted the way that we provide a humanistic and strengths-based program and one that makes parents feel that they are their child's first and foremost important teacher, not, not the facilitator. Um, I'm certainly skilled at what I do and I can facilitate the process, but parents know their children the best. Our job is to provide a really beautiful, safe and judgment-free space for parents to come in and make music with their child and make beautiful, um, meaning, share meaningful moments and make beautiful memories and take that home yeah. to enrich their home life. Well, look, we, we're so grateful for your time and your, your expertise today. If you were to, I guess, summarise, um, I guess, the key points um, just for parents to take away from this chat today, what, how, how would you do that and what would they be? My, the key points right now is if you're um, spending more time at home and you're isolating or, you know, social distancing and you're spending loads of times with your kids, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing, but also very taxing. It's, it's a lot of time to spend with little people. Then I would say break up the days, put some little musical routines in place. So have a, a little, um, some singing you can do in the morning, some musical games, maybe making instruments as a craft activity. Then everyone get together and have a boogie and a dance in the afternoon and use music ritualistically at night to help bring the children to that sense of closure of the day to bed. Um, and most of the, my big take home message right now would be sing, use your voices, 
sing to the children. One of my colleagues, Ali Davies, um, recently shared a chant that she's been using that went viral on Facebook. She's a great music therapist. Another colleague of mine, Rebecca Craner, has just put together a how to use music in the home pack. There's, there's lots of ways parents can access. But my key messages would be um, sing, 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 sing to your babies and your toddlers. Move to music, move with your bodies, hold little babies and hold hands, share a physical sense of connection and make music. Um, and then if you need to access some tech to, you know, put on some great good quality music and have a dance, keep it fun. And, and just remember this moment will pass. Um, and we want our little people to have within this moment when we as the adults are a bit stressed, we want the little people to still know that they're at our, um, their core to why we're doing what we're doing and staying home to keep everyone safe. So using music as your superpower. Yes. Well, look, um, if parents have got any other questions for you or want to reach out um, and, and find you and, and music beat, whereabouts can they find you? We are online, so we've got our own website, musicbeat.com.au. We've got heaps of resources on there. Uh, we have a lot of blogs. You can go and look through all our blogs on how to use music in the home, um, different age groups. We also have a free ebook on our website on how to use music in the home again. And you can tell this is my passion because the more music is made at home with parents, this is what we know, the better off kids do in the long run. And it's so simple. So we've got a whole bunch of suggestions there. Um, we're running online holiday programs and um, online music next term to keep everyone safe in their homes. And we're on Facebook and we're on Instagram. We do free music two, at least two to three times a week on Facebook. We call them our jam sessions. Mm -hmm. So it's free for everybody to come and join us. Um, and what else are we doing? We're about to launch some recorded music because not everyone can come on when we do our live programs. So we don't, we aren't able to record those at the moment. They're only live in the moment, so you need the link. So for parents that have had their work schedules changed because of COVID-19, and also for families who have, um, we've got a lot of expat families that now live overseas. So we're putting together a pre-record package of six sessions that parents can just purchase. It'll be very affordable. Our aim right now is to keep everyone connected, to keep our community strong, to keep everyone making music, so we're, we're looking at all the different ways we can do that. So definitely check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and our website. That's the main link. And we'll definitely include those links at the bottom of the introduction paragraph. So honoured and grateful for your time today. And I look forward to chatting with you again soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.